Hey guys, it's Lil Karibo. Here with yet another episode recap of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And I have to kind of keep it down, because as you can see, I'm at the girls' dorm. The smelly girls' dorm. The girls, where they smell like girls. Yeah, I'm at the girls' dorm. You see, this episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX predominantly takes place at the Obelisk Blue girls' dorm, which is off limits to boys. And as you can quite clearly tell, I am boy. You don't get much more boy than this. Quite boy. I thought it would be cool to visit the locations where these episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX take place on Academy Island. You know, just to get a feel of the atmosphere that there must have been when these events really took place for real. In reality. In real life. Really. It's real. Don't let anybody tell you different. Living proof. And boy. So yeah, despite being able to sneak my way into Duel Academy, despite being a 34-year-old grown man with a massive beard, boy, I think that if they caught me at the girls' dorm, they'd expel me flat out. I don't want to risk that, so I'm trying to be discreet with my gesticulations and my loud exclamations in a British accent. As discreet as those can be. But I'm gonna do my best to recount the events of episode 3 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. The dub version, by the way. I know a lot of you told me in the previous video that while the phrase Chaz It Up doesn't exist in the uh, Japanese version, the phrase Manjume Thunder does. And to that I respond with Chaz It The F*** up, mate. You're just not chazzing it up enough. Just things don't get chazzed up enough in the Japanese. So I'm sticking with dub. Gonna stick with dub. Sorry. I know it bothers a lot of you, but it don't bother me none. Because I'm loving it. Seriously. I'm, I'm dead serious. Genuinely enjoying watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX dub. I know I sound very exasperated and like I probably blow things out of proportion a lot when it comes to some of the dumber things that happen in the show. But I'm having a great time. And if you want to watch it with me, I highly encourage that when you watched this video, go watch episode 4 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX dub, available on either Yu-Gi-Oh!.com or on Crunchyroll.com. It's worth checking out, please. If only so you can truly understand why I get so worked up about Bassi and Misawa being a posh head. Girl, he's a posh head. Uh. Episode 3 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is called A Duel in Love, which implies to me that a card game is going to fall in love with somebody. Either that or it's the name of a really weird, obscure 1950s love song. A duel in love, duel in love. That's how they do it. Because singing in a high-pitched voice was manly back then. And now with Justin Timberlake, it is again. Neat, that. This episode starts out with all of the main characters in class. They're actually in... Uh, a dual academy class being taught by Professor Crowler. And Alexis is in the middle of answering a question about the kinds of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that there are. So let's take a listen. Dual monster cards can be grouped into normal monster cards, fusion monster cards, ritual monster cards, effect monster cards, trap cards, and spell cards. As you can tell, it sounds like she's been doing her research. So then- Trap cards can be divided into normal traps, counter traps, and continuous traps. Yeah, okay, so there's a lot of cards. Anyway, Spell cards can be separated into normal spells, continuous spells, equip spells, quick play spells, ritual spells, and field spells. Okay, Alexis, stop, please. Fusion monster cards, trap cards, normal traps, ritual monster cards, normal spells, counter traps, effect monster cards. Stop it, fucking stop! Crowler is extremely impressed by Alexis's basic knowledge of the fact that cards exist and that there are different types of those cards. She's clearly done her research. Very knowledgeable. And then Crowler calls on Cyrus to explain what a field spell is, and Cyrus can't do it. Which is like, what? Because it's kind of in the name. Like, I feel more than any other card, that one kind of is self-explanatory. It affects things on the field. It's a field spell. A spell that affects things on the field. A spell you cast on a field. There you go. Cyrus, it's basically just rephrase the name. Do that. You could have easily just winged the answer and just nailed it. Crowler tells Cyrus to sit his little turquoise ass down. And then weirdly, in the dub, Crowler leans forward and opens his mouth, and then dialogue comes out of it even though his mouth ain't moving. Check it out, it's weird. Now, would someone please give me the answer? Preferably someone not wearing red, thank you. That character clearly isn't talking. What are you doing? Why did you dub over that? Jaden calls out Crowler for insulting Slifer Reds and reminds Crowler that he beat him in the first episode. Which is basically like me raising my hand in English class and saying, by the way, teacher, you're sh which I did frequently. I wonder why he always put me in detention. And then Crowler like gets really upset with Jaden and is like, somehow I'm gonna expel that kid. And I'm like, 
Can't you do it just for him being a, a, a bastard? I'm pretty sure there's a bastard clause somewhere in Duel Academy. If child is bastard, expelled. That's why they kicked Pegasus out of Duel Academy. The bastard. And then we get the opening theme, which I can't sing super loud because obviously girls dorm and I don't want to alert them to my presence, but I can whisper it. Chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard. Finding trouble, never looking too hard. We're back at class, they never taught us this. What's something you gotta learn in a miss? Stuff times, hard crimes, we'll take them on together. This is the strangest thing I've ever done. It's such a great theme. I love it. Then we go back to another class where Professor Banner is teaching the kids and he introduces himself as Professor Lyman Banner. Lyman, is that a real name? Is that his name? Lyman? Lyman, ha uh ha -huh. fighter of the truth man. Ha ha ha! Champion of the fibs. He's Lion Man. And he's stroking Pharaoh the Cat on his desk. I love Pharaoh the Cat. Still wanna voice him. Meow. Don't pet the back of my neck, I'm sensitive there. That's right. Pet me on the butt. That's much more like it. Pra pra pra. That's his purr. Cause he's the Pharaoh and he has to do everything very enunciated and dramatic. Pra. He's purring. Professor Banner explains that he teaches kids lesser known dueling strategies. Some that he says people might consider unnatural. Where have I heard that before? The dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a slifer red. Professor Banner then asks Cyrus to get Pharaoh the cat for him, and Cyrus looks down and sees that Pharaoh the cat is rubbing up against his legs. Meow. I quite enjoy the texture of the surface area of your pants. Your trousers are pleasurable to me. Meow. I'm a cat. Then we cut to Crowler, who's at his desk in his office, and he's writing uh, a letter with a quill. And Crowler's thinking to himself, oh, that's the last mistake that Jaden will ever make in this academy. And then he puts some lipstick on, and he seals the letter in an envelope with a kiss, with like a big lipstick mark on the, the seal of the envelope. It's quite amazing. He's very dedicated to his little prank that he's doing. And then Crowler exclaims, ha ha, the big kiss off. And I'm like, I'd like to give Jaden the big kiss off too, except it only rhymes with kiss off. Eh? While the kids are in gym class, Crowler sneaks into the boys' locker room and opens all of the lockers until he finds Jaden's boots and then puts the envelope on top of them. And I'm like, why do you even call them lockers if you're not gonna lock them? What is the point? You kids, you don't know what you're doing. See, they've only been taught about how to play cards and not how to lock lockers. Again, it's in the title. Field spells, lockers. It's simple, lock them. And then in gym class, the gym coach shows up and shrieks at the kids like a full on banshee. I'm not exaggerating. Listen. Hi everyone, my name is Fonda Fontaine and I'll be your gym instructor for this semester. Hey, I've got an idea for the voice you should use for this character. How about the sound you hear when you die? Cause that's what that is probably. Cyrus then bursts into the boys locker room and exclaims that he's late. Cause apparently he went to the girls locker room by mistake. And then he opens his locker and he sees Jaden's boots in there with the envelope on him. And, and he says, oh, I guess Jaden's still borrowing my locker. I was like, hang on, the gym coach just introduced themselves to the kids. So they've obviously never had gym class before. So how is Jaden still using your locker? What's going on? The timeline is all out of proportion. These details don't add up. Shh, girls dorm. Also, why does Jaden have to use your locker? Was his destroyed in some sort of card game related explosion? What happened to Jaden's locker? Did Bastion Masawa piss all over it like he Pisses all over everything? Did all of Obelisk Blue just vandalize it beyond recognition? What happened? I imagine it's because Jaden is the only one who remembered to lock his locker, and then he forgot how to open it. So he's just using Cyrus's, because nobody else locks their fing lockers. Cyrus picks up the envelope and opens it and reads the letter, and he realizes that it's a love letter from Alexis. And it says this Trap cards can be divided into trap cards, ritual monster cards, fusion monster cards, effect monster monster cards, normal traps, normal spells, counter traps. No, it doesn't say that. It actually says that Alexis is in love with him and invites him to come to the girls dorm after hours. Cyrus says that this is a lot nicer than what his mum usually writes to him. Wow, your mum never says she loves you?
you? That explains a lot about Cyrus. It's a very depressing detail about his character we just learned. Also, why is your mum writing to you already? You've been at the Duel Academy one day. It was like, as soon as you got on the helicopter, she started writing a postcard and didn't write that she loves you. Just said, I just saw you on a helicopter, sends postcard. And Cyrus reads it and is like, when is she gonna tell me she loves me? She will never do that. Then Cyrus imagines him and Alexis running towards each other in a field of flowers, being all gushy and romantic over each other. It's about the closest thing you'll ever get to a canon ship in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that dream sequence. So, you know, enjoy it while it lasts. Later that night, Jaden comes into the Slifer Red Dorm, toweling his hair, and says, Cyrus, the outhouse is yours if you need it. Was he showering in the bog? That would explain his hair, both the consistency and the color. I'm gonna get my game on right after I dunk my head in that toilet. Of course, they could have a shower in the outhouse, I don't know. I like to imagine he just puts his head in the toilet when he needs to shower. It's my head cannon. Chumley informs Jaden that Cyrus took off in a good mood earlier. And Jaden's like, a good mood? That doesn't sound like Cyrus. We're just learning so many tragic details about Cyrus today. Then we see Cyrus rowing across the lake to get to the obelisk blue girl's dorm. And he's all chuffed about it. Meanwhile, I'm like, you have to row a boat to get to the girls. You have to be a really committed pervert to go peep on them. And I guess... Cyrus is a really committed pervert. Not really. He's not going to peep on anybody. He's just deluded himself into thinking someone can love him. And then we see Crowler, like, sneaking into the girls' dorm property in a, like, ninja getup with a massive, beautiful, blonde ponytail, like, billowing out behind him. And he uses bolt cutters to open the gate and get in. It's like a whole metal... It's Metal Gear Crowler. Mm, this is a sneaking mission. And then in the dub, while Crowler is sneaking toward the girls' dorm, they dub over dialogue of a girl talking to Alexis, offering to go to the Wade pool. And Alexis replies, No thanks. We Wade and the boys will rage. Will they? Rage? I don't know about you, but anytime I see a girl in a wading pool, I just... I just... I just so angry! Ah! Just real mad about it. I highly doubt the boys would go anywhere near a pool. Because if I have assessed the situation correctly, these boys all have decks all over their bodies at all times. So if they went anywhere near the water, they'd risk damaging their cards. They're not gonna do that. And then the other girl says, Hello, girls dorm? No boys allowed. And clearly they've just recorded this dialogue so that they can hammer home the point that boys aren't supposed to be at the girls dorm, period. And I'd call them out for not being subtle, but in this show, it doesn't really stand out because nothing is subtle. Speaking of which, Ninja Crowler jumps into a bush and talks loudly about catching Jaden in the act when he gets there. Alexis and her friends are then shown in the obelisk blue girls dorm wading pool and they have photoshopped on bikinis. It must suck to be a four kids character and just never be able to get naked. It's like every character in Shaman King, One Piece, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, they might as well just be Tobias Fumke. As a result of not being able to get naked, in the four kids universe it's actually considered sexier to put more more clothes on. Just imagine a sexy lady reclining on a bed with like five anoraks on and a dozen jumpers, just completely smothered in clothes, being like, you want some of this? One of the girls scoffs and says that Jaden had some nerve talking sh** to Crowler earlier, and Alexis is like, I thought it was kind of cool. <laughs> then the other girl's like, it might have been cool if he had the talent to back it up. He literally beat Professor Crowler in the first episode. Most of you saw it, if not all of you. So what are you on about? Obviously the girls must have selective memory or something. They only have so much space in their brain for such details as Trap cards can be divided into normal monster cards, continuous traps, normal spells, fusion monster cards, trap cards- No! And then we cut to Crowler and he sees Cyrus showing up to the girls' dorm and it's not Jaden, it's, it's Cyrus. So he flips out and he falls into the water. And then a bunch of girls immediately spot Cyrus and surround him. You see, Cyrus would have been perfectly inconspicuous if it weren't for the fact that he looks like Cyrus. That was his first mistake, looking like that. Then we cut to inside the girls' dorm, which is all lavish and beautiful, and the girls are interrogating Cyrus as to why he's there. And not only that, but they have him, like, bound by the wrist on a leash. So he's already getting to live out at least two of my ultimate fantasies in this episode. You know, getting tied up, and also finding another man's shoes in his locker. What? I just want a free pair of shoes. Not much to ask for, is it? The girls don't believe Cyrus for a second, so they ask to see the note that he says that he was given. And they read it, and they point out that it was addressed to Jaden. And they also point out that it couldn't possibly have been written by Alexis, because she would have mentioned about a hundred thousand different types of cards while she was writing it. Cyrus is very sad, because now there are two women in his life that he thought loved him, but don't. This kid's having a rough time of it. Suddenly, the gym teacher, Fonda Fontaine, comes out and says this. <laughs> 
And then Alexis's friends hide Cyrus by pushing him down and using him as a chair. Okay, three fantasies. And apparently the gym teacher with the voice that could cause the apocalypse doesn't think it's suspicious that two girls are sitting down back to back right behind Alexis and just shrugs it off and goes back to bed. And then Alexis gets like a crafty look on her face and says, we'll use Cyrus as bait to lure Jaden over here to see if he's as good as he claims. To which Cyrus must be thinking, bait? I'm good at that. We cut to Jaden who's playing some sort of generic fighting game and he claims to have a 300 hit combo. Because you know, it's not enough that he's the best at card games and claims to be the best at card games. He's also apparently impossibly good at fighting games too. I just love the deep and flawed character that he is. Just so many reasons to want to get behind him and hope he does well. Because he's already just so good at everything. Just thank God for him. Of course he could just be playing Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Jaden gets a video message from the girls, but they've like encrypted the message via some elite hacking skills that they apparently have. It's like something from Jigsaw. Come to the girls dorm. Jaden rows his way over to the girls dorm and he sees that Cyrus has been captured by the girls. And they say that Cyrus was trespassing and now that Jaden is here, he's trespassing too. And Alexis says that if Jaden doesn't want them to turn them in, he has to beat her in a duel. And Jaden, of course, recounts the creed of the duelist, which is good or bad. If someone challenges you to a duel, you just gotta do it. There's no choice. There's no choice. A strange creed. And then we cut to Jaden and Alexis on the front of these rowboats with their GX dual discs by the toys, just facing off against each other on the lake. And this is something like legitimately cool to me as a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh in general. I think it's really cool when duels happen in like unorthodox situations. I get so bored of just like being in a duel arena or being in a city or in the street or, you know, being in cyberspace all the time. It's cool when they have like weird apparatus or like an environment involved. And people dueling on rowboats in a lake, that's unique, that's really cool. So I just thought I'd give the show legit props for that. And then we see Crowler watching them from the water. He's still in the lake, he's not left it. Hey, they're playing a card game, they're gonna be doing this for a while. If you stay in that water, you're gonna prune. But then I realize I'm talking about Crowler. And if he were to prune any more than he already has, he'd become an actual prune. Like cornering the market on prune humor. And then something happens that's really funny to me. Alexis and Jaden do like a split screen thing where they go, duel! But then a split second later, Jaden says, get your game on, Alexis! <laughs> like he had to get it in there. It's like, I'm gonna say duel and she won't be expecting it, but then she does it at the same time as him. He's like, get your game on! Get your game on! Yeah, my, my catchphrase. I'm unique. It's really funny. Watch the episode just for that. Jaden just blurting out his catchphrase really awkwardly. Alexis summons a lady monster because she is a lady. And then Jaden summons elemental hero Sparkman! 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 And he attacks with static shockwave, which a lot of you pointed out last time is actually written on the card, so I look a bit of a plonker, don't I? But not nearly as much of a plonker as the guy saying out loud, STATIC SHOCKWAVE! So there's that. And then Alexis activates her track card, Dobla Passe, which turns Jaden's attack into a direct attack on her, and then allows her to attack with her Lady Monster at Jaden's life points. And when Lady Monster attack, her increases by 600. So she just backhands Jaden in like the second turn. Alexis asks if Jaden's impressed, and Jaden says, impressed? I think I'm in love. Are you f***ing kidding, Jaden? We all know you don't have emotions other than card games and the desire to play them. You're not in love with anybody. You are incapable of that feeling. Jaden Yuki, sociopath. Alexis replies, you're sweet. Too bad I have to crush you. Four fantasies. Alexis plays Blade Skater, which is just Wesley Snipes in some rollerblades, and then uses polymerization to fuse the monsters into Cyberblader. Are you a Cyberblader? Sorry, Gladiator's theme. It just takes control sometimes. Alexis says, attack with Whirlwind Rage. Oh, you mean Windy Windy Flip Kick. And it pirouettes at Sparkman and destroys it. Defeat by ballet. The most cliche girly attack of all time. Jaden activates a field spell called Fusion Gate, which causes Cyrus to go, what is that? I don't understand what's happening. Because of the field spell malarkey from before. And this lets Jaden fusion summon without the need for a polymerization card. So I summons Flame Wingman. Both of the monsters on the field have the same 
attack. So Jaden uses a card called Kushido Spirit. And this card makes it so that Flame Wingman can attack another monster with the same attack as it and still destroy it while remaining alive. And of course, Flame Wingman's effect means that Alexis takes damage equal to his attack. And then Alexis reveals that Cyberblader's effect means that it can't be destroyed by an opponent with only one monster. And then this highly tense, thrilling, dramatic exchange happens. But then, then that would mean that neither of us lose any life points. And the Academy Award for most phoned in performance goes to Jaden says, looks like you got me. And Alexis says, oh, believe me, Jaden, you'll know when I've got you. Like right now, for example. So he was right, and he knew. So, what are you talking about? Some of the most redundant banter I've ever heard, Alexis. Alexis equips fusion weapon to Cyberblader, and then attacks Jaden's flame wingman with it. Jaden says now the only card he has out on the field is Fusion Gate, and the only way for him to win depends on what he draws next. And guess what he draws? Monster Flippin' Reborn. Which as we know, as evidenced from Jaden in the previous episode, Having that card just means he wins. He's won. He wins. Just give it to him. It's, it's over. What could possibly happen after the event of somebody drawing the card Monster Reborn that could cause him to ever lose? Just no- we don't know. Jaden plays Elemental Hero Clayman and then uses his Monster Reborn to bring back Elemental Hero Sparkman. And then he fuses them both to bring out Elemental Hero Thundergun Express. No man left behind. Jaden says Thundergun Express's special ability is that it can destroy any monsters who whose original attack are lower than his. I love it when they give monster cards gender. Even ones with completely indeterminate gender. Ictodia! It's not possible! Nobody's ever been able to summon him! Did you just assume that dual monsters gender? Yeah, so? That's against the gender binaries, isn't it? Screw the gender binaries, I'm confused by all of this! Bit of light hard comedy there, about a serious subject. Cyberblader is destroyed and Thundergun Express attacks directly! Hanging full dong in the process. Alexis gets zapped by a bunch of electricity and then some some of it goes into the water and electrocutes Crowler. Wait, what? He physically reacts to being electrocuted by something from a duel he's not even part of. So that means that the electricity was real and the kids are playing with potentially deadly weapons. Because if the electricity's real, that means the monsters and the explosions are real. That's just how that works. It's not like there are any like hard vision holographic projectors anywhere around here. They're on a lake. So logically we can deduce it's the dual discs doing this. Why are they allowed to have these dangerous items? They're hurting people. Sorry, I gotta keep my voice down, girl storm. But seriously, what? Alexis's life points drop to zero and Jaden says, that's game. That's game. That's game. That's game. Alexis is true to her word and allows Jaden and Cyrus to go free. And before he leaves, Jaden gives Alexis her props and says, you got game. Unironically, the main character of this show told a girl she got game. Jade and Yuki use that phrase. I would argue that we can pinpoint this as the exact moment that the phrase you got game stopped being cool. When Jade and Yuki said it. Just a tragic loss for the community. As they row their way back to the Slifer Red Dorm, Alexis thinks to herself that even if Jaden didn't win, she would still let them go. Because life at Duel Academy with Jaden and Cyrus is is much more fun with them than without. And Alexis's friend looks at her and thinks, I've never seen Alexis act like this. Like what? Nice? Then why do you like her? Also, unless you guys were friends before coming to the school, it's weird that you have these weird expectations of her character after like two days. And Alexis's friend thinks, I wonder if she's actually falling for Jaden. And I'm like, how could you not love a guy who showers in a toilet? Big old plunger head. Crowler watches the boat go, still in the water, and says that he'll find a way to expel Jaden right after he finds a way back. Are there no security cameras on the island? It seems like that would be perfectly good evidence there. But no, I guess we don't want to monitor the safety of these kids on an island with a volcano that is quite active. Nothing to worry about. No concern necessary. And that's episode three of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. A duel in love. And I think you'll agree that out of the three episodes we've watched so far, that was definitely in the top three. That was kind of bothers me in Yu-Gi-Oh! shows that whenever they like introduce the girl character, her only real defining trait is that she is the girl. And I'm sure that's true of a lot of anime shows. But this episode for me kind of embodies that problem because I imagine this is the last time Alexis is going to be like 
the driving force of an episode for a while. I, I, I'm imagining. I know her brother gets involved, but that's more about her brother. And I think it's kind of a shame. I've been watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns and Ghost Girl is a really cool character. In fact, there's a bunch of really cool female characters on that show. I just wish there were more in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Not that there's anything inherently wrong with Alexis. I'm just like, I really wish there was more, you know? Yeah. Got all serious there. That was weird. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Uh, if you're interested, you can totally watch the show with me. Uh, not, not with me physically, but at the same time as I do by watching it on either Yu-Gi-Oh!.com or Crunchyroll.com. They have all the episodes. Check them out while I do. Follow along. As always, I want to give a whopping shout out to all our Patreon pledges. You guys... You guys are amazing. We want to thank you for all of the support you've given us in, in every shape and form. It's really changed our lives. It's changed the way we do things, and it's it's made us able to do things that we love consistently and, and easily and having fun doing it, so thank you. Anyway, I'll see you next week with episode four of Yu-Gi-Oh! G oh, no. The girls have found me. I've got to hide. Save yourself! Dual monster cards can be grouped into normal monster cards, fusion monster cards, ritual monster cards, effect monster cards, trap cards, normal monster cards, continuous traps, normal spells, fusion monster cards, trap cards, effect monster cards, normal traps, 